Greetings folks, Kamal here, but this time with a very interesting integration result featuring the integral from 0 to infinity of f of alpha squared x squared plus beta squared divided by x squared dx, where alpha and beta are both positive parameters and f here is a continuous function. Now provided that the integral converges, we can figure out a very nice simplified version of the integral that is pretty cool and we'll apply it to a concrete example later on in the video. But how exactly do I want to begin solution development, or in this case, the exploration? Well, we have alpha squared x squared plus beta squared divided by x squared, so there's an interesting symmetry here regarding alpha and beta. What if I perform the substitution that is letting x here equal to, let's see, we'll have beta divided by alpha times t. And this implies that dx equals negative beta divided by alpha t squared dt. Now as x approaches 0 from the right, we have t approaching infinity. And as x approaches infinity, of course, we have t approaching 0. So that means we now have the integral with the limits being switched. So we have i being the integral from infinity to 0 of f of alpha squared times beta squared divided by alpha squared t squared plus beta squared times, let's see, this would be alpha squared t squared divided by beta squared and the differential element is negative beta divided by alpha t squared dt. Okay, cool. And of course we can switch up the limits of integration so that they don't look that weird anymore. That introduces an extra negative sign that cancels out and the one because of the differential element. So we have integral zero to infinity, f of cancellation. So we indeed have alpha squared t squared plus beta squared divided by t squared times beta divided by alpha t squared dt. So this is the exact same function that we had originally. The only difference is the dummy variable and of course the name of the dummy variable does not matter. So we could take both of these forms of the integral i and add them together, because by that token we would have 2 times i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, where we'll factor out this thing here. So we factor out the function that is f of alpha squared x squared plus beta divided by x squared, and we're left with 1 plus beta divided by alpha x squared dx. And now we could use a nice substitution. But what would make the substitution nice? It would be nice if that differential element looked a lot, well, a lot more compact. So if I say I have the differential element 1 by beta divided by alpha x squared dx, I would like it to equal to du. That would be very pleasant indeed. But what exactly is the substitution that would allow that? Well, we could just work our way backwards and integrate then we see that we need x minus beta divided by alpha x. We need to let this thing equal to u. And that would be quite nice. Now what would happen to the limits of integration? As x tends to 0, we have u tending to negative infinity. And as x tends to infinity, we have u tending to infinity as well. Okay, cool. So this implies that 2i equals the integral from negative to positive infinity of f of something, du. Now what exactly is that something? We have this term, how can we express it in terms of u? Well, we have alpha squared x squared plus beta squared divided by x squared. So we could just factor out the x squared term, the alpha squared term that is. We have x squared plus beta divided by beta squared divided by alpha squared x squared, terribly sorry about that, that got a bit annoying. Anyway, so this looks pretty damn close. We have the squared terms, but we need a minus sign between them and no squares. So we could just adopt a completing square approach. I mean, why not? So we have alpha squared times x squared plus beta divided by alpha x squared minus two times beta divided by alpha x times x, so we have some cancellation happening. That means the missing term is just 2 beta divided by alpha. We'll add that thing as well. 
And all of this turns into the whole squared term. So we have alpha squared times x minus beta divided by alpha x squared plus 2 beta divided by alpha. Now recall that this thing over here was the u variable. So this is now u squared, and we can expand using alpha squared now. So we have alpha squared u squared minus, no wait, plus 2 alpha times beta, which is pretty cool. So that's what alpha squared x squared plus beta squared divided by x squared equals. And that means we return back to our function. And of course, I'll need more writing space. So copy. And I'll just paste it down here. There we go. That means the argument of our function f is now alpha squared u squared plus 2 alpha times beta, which we recognize as an even function of u. So we could just integrate from 0 to infinity and double the result. The 2s would cancel out, and we have i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of f of alpha squared u squared plus 2 alpha beta, which is very nice indeed. Let's try and apply this result to the menacing looking integral that looks like a mutated version of the Fresnel integral. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of alpha squared x squared plus beta squared divided by x squared. Okay, cool. We know what this thing should equal to. We know that this thing should be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of alpha squared x squared plus 2 alpha beta dx. And we know how to expand the sine of a plus b, right? That's pretty easy. We have integral 0 to infinity sine of alpha squared x squared times cosine of 2 alpha beta plus cosine of alpha squared x squared times the sine of 2 alpha beta dx. That means we have a couple of integrals now to evaluate. We have cosine of 2 alpha beta times the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of alpha squared x squared plus sine of 2 alpha beta times, wait terribly, sorry about that, times integral 0 to infinity of cosine alpha squared x squared. Now these two are the Fresnel integrals and we know exactly what they evaluate to. So they both sort out to 1 by alpha times root pi by 8. I've solved them numerous times using quite a few techniques. I mean, I think if you just scroll down the videos in my channel, you'll see so many videos on the Fresnel integrals. I've solved them quite a few number of ways. My favorite would be the generalized Fresnel integral as well as the solution development using contour integration. Anyway, check those out. Too many links to actually add in the description box, so look around, you'll find lots of interesting stuff. In case you're new here, then that's pretty much quite a bit of an incentive to subscribe. Anyway, time to get back to work. We have i equal to, we can factor out 1 by alpha times root pi by 8, and we're left with cosine 2 alpha beta plus sine 2 alpha beta which is a very nice result indeed in terms of both parameters alpha and beta. And we might get a very nice looking result in terms of the golden ratio if the product of alpha and beta equals pi by 10. Yeah, so for that set of values of alpha and beta, we would get a very nice result. I haven't worked that out yet. Comment down below exactly what should that look like. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. More importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. Do drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you like the effort I'm putting out, you can support my content on Patreon. It would mean a lot. Thank you. See you next time.